Welcome back. Time for entertainment now with Brad Kelly and punk is the word. And welcome back to Live at Five. Brad Kelly's here now with a look at entertainment news. And welcome back. Time to turn things over to the man with the swinging entertainment harmonies. Here's Brad Kelly. Brad Kelly joins us now with entertainment and apparently some funny stuff going on this weekend. Hi, Brad. Yeah, very funny stuff, Krista. There are a number of Canadian comics who have made it in Hollywood, like Jim Carrey, Martin Short, Mike Myers, and the list goes on and on. This weekend, one of those comics from that lengthy list will be at Yuck Yucks. Toronto native Harlan Williams is here through a very busy schedule, and we had a chance to meet with him today. How's the comedy tour going? You've been busy uh, doing your movies, now you're back on tour. Well, yeah, it's, it's actually not even a tour. It's just kind of a special one-off concert here at, in Calgary. Uh, I don't even have time to go on a tour, but uh, I booked uh, this concert in Calgary a long time ago, and this is one of the clubs that I started out at. So, you know, I was making you were here sure not too home. How long ago is that? This was, uh, I think I was here like two years ago. So it's been a while since I've been back, and uh, it's good to be here, man. This well, is your hair is the same color. You said you had to dye it for a movie. Yeah, look at it. It's totally, it's like jet black. I had to dye it for a movie I just did, and I, I feel like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Ringworm, or whatever it's called. <laughs> What's it called? What about the movies now? Have you seen any of the new movies that are out these days? Yeah, I saw Shrek, and uh, it's it's really good. I was pleasantly surprised. It was nice to see like a full-length animated cartoon that was kind of hip and didn't have like those annoying Elton John songs all the way through <laughs> yeah. them. You know, no. oh, easy. <laughs> oh my God, talk about whale sounds. <laughs> uh, that other one that came out, uh, what was it called? Um, Kramer versus Kramer? Yeah, is that in 1979. Playing? Yeah, they're bringing oh, is, that one back. Is it? Yeah, okay. That one was a while back. I'm sorry. I'm, you're singing through that me might have been, That might have been a cable upstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bet it was. <laughs> it was called Kramer versus Kramer <laughs> <laughs> on cable. <laughs> Anything twisted that you're going to be uh, telling Calgarians on the weekend? Well, I, I won't tell you the jokes because then you'll miss it, but I'll tell you, and people can laugh at home. Some of the topics I'm going to be covering are blue herons, um, lions, uh, airbags in cars, and this is really going to make you laugh, um, donuts. So I, this is going to be good. And Chinook, salmon maybe. How, what'd you call me? <laughs> Chinook to you too, my friend. I'm just trying to be friendly. How dare you? The guy just Chinooked me, man. How dare you? <laughs> Thanks, Harley. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> the classic tale of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table will hit the stage as the magical story of Camelot is here for a four-week run at the Performing Arts Center. Here's a preview of all the fantasy fun. This production is uh, wonderful. It's uh, romantic. It's epic. It is uh, full of idealism and full of wonderful music and uh, great actors. I mean, I can't go on to say any more except that it's a fabulous show. Now, Theatre Calgary is partnering up with the Manitoba Theatre Company and Edmonton Citadel Theatre to bring Camelot to town. They didn't spare any expense either. Over $700,000 have been spent on costumes alone. Myself, I have 12 costume changes because I'm the queen and everybody else has about six or eight and so it's just lots and lots of costumes changing all the time and it's beautiful to look at the lighting lovely camelot is coming off a sold out run in manitoba and theater calgary is bringing this musical fantasy right here to our city for the next month now aren't calgarians fortunate to have this production during valentine's day we were the lucky ones uh i think we uh I don't know how it worked out, but I was so happy to see that we would have it during the month of February and to make sure, especially for Valentine's Day, because I should tell all the guys out there that it's, you know, you can get big points <laughs> by getting tickets to this show and taking uh, the one you love. in Vegas at the Hard Rock and we went on a cruise and the cool thing when you go on a boat is you want to see how many of those cool glasses you can collect by the end of the trip. You know, every glass is a different shape for a different drink and they hang around your neck and it's just like, you know, when you're on the cruise you want to be on the in crowd and however many glasses you have, you're the coolest. Mindy calls it collecting them actually, it's stealing from the boat. <laughs> no. A collection, it's a collection, it's a memorabilia. Will you bring me a cold one, baby? 
I can't imagine ever doing anything but being a singer, especially now. When I was younger, my mother always wanted me to be a lawyer because she said I was the best arguer in the world, but I have no interest in that. She thinks you're the best arguer? Yeah. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Okay, she is. Oh, ah. <laughs> is this all automatic? Now, you just met Christina Aguilera. How do you feel? Very excited. It was a neat experience to meet her. What did you think of her? Awesome. She's gorgeous. She's funny. She's she's down to earth. She's great. Oh, it's going really, really good. I'm having a really great time around Canada. Having to rent some studios across the way. Um, we're in the middle of recording a Christmas album, so um, everyone along the way has been really, really uh, accommodating, really sweet. So I'm loving Canada so far. <laughs> How does it feel like uh, headlining your own tour for the very first time? Oh my time? gosh, it feels amazing to headline my own tour for the first time. I mean, I've been waiting, dreaming about this forever, so for it to finally be happening and um, for me to feel good about the acts and stuff going on beforehand, it's, it's a really tight show, so I'm really happy. I'm using an airbrush right now with liquid makeup and basically using about 15 PSI air and just lightly going over the skin and the paints are being applied through the airbrush, mixing with the air, and coming on the skin. Basically, it's, it's quicker than using a regular glycerin pencil like uh, Kiss would be doing right now, getting ready for the show. Hmm, I don't know. It looks fairly simple, but you gotta wonder if this stuff comes off. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Thirty years and still going strong. Of course, is it still just as fun? It is fun for me. You know, I was telling someone in an interview um, that getting to the places is not as much fun as it used to be. But once I get there, once I go on stage, there's really no place I'd rather be in the world. You know, I've worked Calgary. I can't tell you. We used to work the Stampede here a lot. Mm. You know, so I have a lot of history in this town. Performing after uh, all this time and uh, the great career that you've had, is it an addiction? You just can't get enough of it. Well, I think part of it is that I think that anyone who's in this business who won't admit to you that he suffers from an insatiable ego is either lying to you or lying to himself. I think that, you know, once you get into this, there's something that, that really takes over when you get out there. And, and, and the other thing is, I think that, you know, I do a lot of stuff where I try to make people laugh. And, and that brings me, I think, more reward than applause, because people will applaud to be nice, but they won't laugh to be nice. We're going to see what's going on out there with Brad Kelly. Brad. Yes, Jeb. Where are you at? What have you found now? Well, we're at uh, well, we're, we're at Rib Tour, of course, yeah. and uh, all kinds of great camping gear. And uh, Jeb, you know, I, I was trying to convince you that uh, going camping and tenting is a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to share a tent with somebody, you might uh, want the gas level indicator if the you're going to be <laughs> camping and sharing well, a tent you know, with you. Yeah, that's a good, and make sure that the tent has large <laughs> flaps. I think, you, I think you just tape this to the side of your tent and it just tells you whether or not it's safe to go back in. Yeah, we'll check and see if it has something that fits on a belt loop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Well, let's put it right there. Uh, there you go. Explain this thing for me, please. Okay, well what it is, is just works basically on electricity, okay? You take it, you put your hot dog in there, uh -huh. and, uh, and then you just put it back in there, like, hang on, like so. Maybe, uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. And then just turn it on. Crank it, it up. Just, it just electrocutes. Zaps your wiener. Exactly. Oh, boy. And uh, that doesn't take long. No. No. And, and then, sizzling and delicious. Oh, yeah, and then you just take them off, and you got your bun warmer there. Grant, stick your hand in there and see what happens. No, I don't do that. <laughs> Bun warmer right here, of course. Uh, I, I mean, this thing, uh, in its day, w probably wasn't really safe, you no. wouldn't think. Well, you would think because you've got live terminals. You'd be like, uh, kids, okay. get away from the barbecue uh, wiener zapper. Okay. A lot of uh, original stuff here and, and uh, uh, new stuff. Now, uh, maybe if you want to point out some of the... We have <laughs> something here. Th this is original uh, kind of candy stuff. This Let's is licorice root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's where you extract the licorice flavor from. Okay, let's pop that off there. You got two hands. Go ahead. There we go. Oh, yeah. What's the deal behind this? It tastes like licorice after a while of chewing it. At first it does taste like wood. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> it is wood. It is wood, yeah. Ow! <laughs> ah! Okay. Yeah, it's uh, still wood. 
Still would. <laughs> mm-hmm. No offense, and I don't mean to tell you about your own personal height, but shouldn't you be naked? I, well, you know, uh, they told me that I should be, but uh, apparently that water doesn't even come out of this thing. But uh, we have the shower heads from Labor 2000 on well, board. You know what the rule was to dress one notch above what you think, so clothed it all. I know, I know. I, you just got, I missed the boat on that one, but uh, they're going to give me a little hug. Okay. I'm going to get it here. I'm gonna You're going to get loofed? Oh. Okay, yeah, you, it's gonna be you, fantastic. It can also be used to imply that another person has said or done something foolish. Don't in the dictionary. Who would have thunk it? That's it for entertainment. Have a great weekend. Back to Krista in the athletic department. Hey guys. He's so foolish. That he, he's kid. funny, the kid. The kid is funny. If you love ABBA like Rob Gibson does, you're gonna love this. Rob Gibson has that for us. Could you get my ABBA album signed, yeah, Brad? I'll bring it back. <laughs> Lots to do during the stampede. Mindy couldn't have came at a better time to check this out at the stampede here at Outlaws tonight. Wow, I'm lassoing. Hey.